as it says preparing live stream the meeting is now streaming live on facebook god help us <laughs> <laughs> i'll just go to my phone and just click on there and see if it's coming through for any comments for anybody who's sick enough to want to watch this <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, people who don't know me, they'll think, who is this person? Like, you know, when you and I met, right? Yeah. Who's this person throwing all these disparaging comments out? It's me. And that's what I do for a living. So hang on a second. Shanine, oh, no, no. my love. Yeah. It's nice to see you. So it's lovely. Nice and I know that there's so many people who've been looking forward to me and you getting back together again. <laughs> Yeah. I haven't. I hate every second of it, Joe. Yes, every I know. Second. <laughs> Have you got any idea what we're going to talk about? I haven't a clue, but I quite like that. I feel yeah. like that's the place we should be in. Like, and honestly, I'm open. I'm an open book right now. It doesn't feel uncomfortable. Like, I'm free to speak on whatever. It's it's been. I do want to speak about the last couple of months because I think it's important to acknowledge those last couple of months for everybody what I have seen and what I've experienced and what I feel everybody else is experiencing. Because I'm back out now. And that was by force. <laughs> that was, get out. <laughs> like, yeah. okay, man. And that wouldn't have happened, I think, until that solar eclipse. Yeah. That was a biggie that, that was, wasn't it, really? And, um, yeah. you know, I, I feel energies like you, and I, I don't really know what that means. It just means that I, I feel like I get moved from the invisible realms Right. Yeah. By what I consider to be a benevolent force now. And I don't put any religious terms on it anymore because I've been the labels a long time ago. Yeah. And just as you know, my approach is F off, right, which means focus on feelings first. And that's how I live my life now. I sort of jettison me head and just feel me way to navigating through what's going on, you know, one day at a time. And sometimes it's one breath at a time. And that's what I've learned, Shanine, as you know, more than anything else is just become aware of your breathing because your breathing and your emotional states are intimately and intricately connected. What have you got to say about that then? I, everything you've just said, I relate to. In terms of words, like I've started to notice like the feeling and the weight of a word now. Like, and there's a certain current I think that we're all being carried on and everything that makes that heavy has to fall off. So there's been a lot of falling off, but it doesn't feel like a falling off because things go up, don't they? Like, and I've noticed that in myself, watching the words or trying to kind of correlate what I was feeling with them. Sometimes there aren't any joke right now for what's been happening and how I have felt. Like, I'm so excited. Like everything that's going on right now, I'm so excited because it feels like a game. It's like that's all we're here to do is to play a game and all of the things that used to matter don't anymore like and everything that I used to know it's like opposite it's opposite for the last couple of years like I've been like largely on my own right and it was important for that to happen but I had to do those leaps blind and I think there's a period where we all go through where there is a blind experience where you don't quite know why you have to do what you do and you have no validation as to why those things are being done and you have to remain diligent to that and one of the like kind of things I'd been given was do the true and right thing and then don't lie to yourself and don't lie to others and I kept to that and because I kept to that every time that I moved through something then I'd be shown what was true and what was right and all the knowledge behind that then and everything shifts after that I didn't know how powerful I was I didn't know how protected I was I didn't know how extremely easy it could get once we realize how opposite things really are to what we've been taught and that blind faith shall we say and I hate using that word as well because of its connotations but like that blind faith has been not only operable but like joyful to lean into now like there's a couple of decisions I've had to make over the last couple of months even that are kind of opposite to what I should be doing you know on a logical level and if I look back six months ago I wouldn't have been able to make those decisions because I was still on a 
I don't want to say a lower frame of thought, but a more trapped frame of thought yeah. where I was in this state of survival and thought, this is the way I'm supposed to operate. These are the things that I need. And I want to talk about this idea of like light, like what light does and what it is, because that's opposite too. Like in the old spiritual way of understanding it, it's a frequency we carry when we share, and it doesn't actually matter what you're doing when you're sharing it at all. And there aren't any rules. And you know how mad I was about rules back in the day, Joe? That was driving me bloody mad because I kept breaking them. And I didn't know why it was. It felt like it anyway. And now I realize there aren't any, right? And it's just this sharing state. Because you get to that point, don't you? And you must, you must know this. You get to that point where you have to share. You have to put that energy somewhere. Yeah. And that's kind of where I am at the minute. That's is it okay for me to speak now? Because you know, yeah, you know it's what, fine. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you are permitted. You have you know a window of five like, minutes. You know what we're like when we get going. <laughs> we need to need to put aside five hours for the conversation. <laughs> no, no, no. Did I just hit you with a? I hit yeah. You <laughs> so yeah. So repression, expression, yeah, compression, yeah. pressure, right. Very important depression because I think depression is associated with repression and suppression, and it's associated with a condition that we've been programmed to live by, uh, not made up from our own minds, but fed, if you like, from um, not external sources because there's nothing external, nothing internal, but maybe aspects. Right. The way I'm seeing it now is it's almost like we're programmed in the first half of our life to construct a prison. Right. And in the second half of our life, we have to then, because this is the game we set ourselves, in the second half of our life, we have to find um, ingenious ways to escape from the prison that we've created for ourselves. You know, and I'm beginning to understand now more and more because I feel it deeper and deeper. And like you said, I think what we say comes from a deeper place and therefore it's got much more authority, if you like. And we use that word author because I can see that we are the authors of the scripts, right, that determine the way our DNA expresses itself, right? And therefore we have to dig deep. And how do we know that there's some change that we have to make because we feel shit, right? Yeah. And if we feel shit... It just means that we're out of alignment with who we truly are. And that's all it is to me now. This is about realignment with our essential soul selves, with its intricate and intimate skill set that we came here for to express who we truly are. Christ, see, this is just, it just comes, doesn't it? And this is the truth of what I feel is that for a long, long time, nobody did it to me or nobody did anything to me that I didn't allow at some level. And that means that I'm 100%, 100%, not 99.999, right? 100% personally responsible for the script of the life of Joseph Peter Aloysius Delaney. But not supposed to take it personally. Exactly. Which is what I did for ages. You're not supposed to take it personally. And it took a long time for that to land in. I felt like I was in this sort of like plastic cocoon for a bit because what I knew of love, what I knew what love was, was the best of what I could provide. But you can't, you can't force that on anybody. It has to be shown like on an internal level. It has to be shown. You can't interfere. Like, and the only job that needs to be done is reminding and frequency lifting. That's it. Because, like, as much as we can give what we've got, there's going to be a moment when someone is ready for that. And I, at the time back then, I wasn't ready for half of what I was receiving. And I couldn't, I, and, I, and I can't judge myself for that either. Like, and I don't think any of us should when we get into those prisons or places because they're created perfectly. Like, I look at, like I told you about this, I went through a phase there last year. Joe was very patient with me where I had just decided I wasn't, I didn't believe anything anymore and I tried to shut everything down. And uh, I must be loved 
somewhere, you know, because what came in for me to crack me open was so delicately, perfectly created. Even those, I don't want to say darker things, but the like the challenges, the difficult parts of the game are designed to meet and fit exactly where you are and what you need. And it brings me to tears when you see how that creation moves and how it works. Like that, honestly, I can feel it now even saying it, like I can't help but be so grateful for that knowledge, for the absolute nature of it, that we are genuinely being taken care of and we are being forced when we have to be, but it is a loving force, all of it, mm -hmm. all of it. And that was such an important thing. For me to learn when i look see it comes in now Th this is what i get as you know i get the same thing as you it's almost like a cloak surrounds me and every now and then i get one of them <laughs> stop evading things joseph just <laughs> go forward and if you like you know and i also see that sometimes a whole load of pressure has got to build in order for quantum leaps to take place as well you know, and so I don't really, I mean, I see everything that's going on on that outside screen, because yeah. to me, that's just the, it's just the past that if it's out there on a the screen, it's the past of what's being processed in here. You know, I mean, I see that clearly now. So to actually go around and trying to fiddle out with the outside stuff, it's a waste of energy. It's a waste of time. And it's a big con job, really. It's a big illusion. So really, the only way that we can change things is by sitting and sitting with our processing, really. And I see that there's two levels of processing. There's the cognitive bit up here that thinks it knows everything that's going on. And it knows next to fuck all, basically. <laughs> oh, excuse my French. Oh, no, no. <laughs> it's a Sunday. You after just say fuck, Joe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's like a Sunday, you know, it's like secret. No, no. But uh, there's that one, one fifth up there that thinks it knows what's going on. And there's four fifths under the surface of our consciousness just let me explain that. That means we're not conscious of it, right? Right. That actually is determining, right, how we act in our lives, you know. So how do you find out? Because this is where all the patterns and the programs are that determine the way we think, the decisions we make, and therefore the quality of our life. Right. It turned into a lecture already, but I'm just going to keep going with it. Right. So how do we get in there? We focus on our feelings and our breathing because most of us and i've seen this and i'm saying us i'm seeing those particularly sensitive types who may be watching this now you know we we um we've been a bit like head and feet planted in the clouds really because that's how i've been you know and i think more than anything else now is this has become as todd would say the human is the hero it's about getting back into the body Right. And working with the human and the physical body itself. Yeah. That's becoming so important to me now. So centered in the heart, feet firmly planted in Mother Earth. Shit. You see, I can't help this. I've become like the, the lecturer extraordinaire, but it's so important. And it's so simple, Shanine. It's so simple. If you feel disturbed, don't take any actions. Step back, sink deeper and ask your heart of hearts. What's going on, please? Give us a clue. And then when you get the information, which your head may be screaming, I'm not doing that. Take the information that your heart's supplying you with and act upon it because it will be the correct action. Yeah. Yeah. And if, if not the correct action, the energy's different and things loop consistently. It's like dead energy and everything just loops and loops and loops and loops and loops until you move. Like, and I'm in that place now where I can't, I can't, I can't work with like dead energy anymore. Like I've almost gotten a verse over the last couple of months. Like, and it's not, it's not about any specific thing. It's just if I recognize a loop, I just don't react to it anymore. Cause it, it's not real. <laughs> it's not real. Like it won't create anything. Like, and that, that creative force comes from the movement inside of what is lighter, what is alive. And again, opposite game, it's not the stuff we've been taught, but if we are caught, like you say, in that place of feeling dissociated, which is something I struggled with with autism, by the way, I was constantly popping, you probably knew this, hit, I, talking to you on, on an internet jokes, like all seeing, all knowing Joe, right? But um, you probably did know this. 
but I, I'm sure you did. I used to pop out of my body all the time. Like dissociation was a major thing for me, right? And it wasn't until the last two years where it was a necessity and I had only myself that I was able to notice and observe when it was coming out. And when I came out, it was constant loops. And I was spending more time in my imagination and away from my intuition. Because sometimes that happens. You know, like people who, like myself, have, have had to do that as a coping mechanism. You use the imagination as a barrier from reality. And that's not the same thing as your intuition. Your intuition lives in your body. And when you're in your body, you're much clearer. And you can see and feel that energy shift in what's alive and what's dead. And it's good crack too. Like, I mean, it's good crack when you work it out. Like, it starts to get funny. Like, I walk down the street now and I think about things. I catch myself thinking about something and starting to disassociate. So I'll just, like, breathe and I'll imagine the wings coming up out of my back, right? And taking up the whole space of the street. And I've shifted already. Like, that, you use your imagination from your body space and you can do amazing things. Like, amazing things. And you can work with so much. Like, I was in this terrible place for a while where I was like, I can't move. I can't do anything. I am stuck. Right. And I genuinely believed I was until I started to play with that. Right. And when I started to play with that from an embodied state on the ground, right, using the imagination from that space, right, everything started to shift for me because that energy is a life. And it's not just copy after copy after copy of the same experience. Things get harder and harder and harder to push you into the body, essentially, to push you into feeling everything through and you know that's like you taught me that and I'm so glad you did Joe like I know I, I know you don't like people like I'm not blowing smoke here like but what that's done you beautiful man like what yeah. that's done no I need to say it and I want you to hear it and I want other people here too because that that is something that needs to be honoured I think we have to spend more time I've got so much more time now with no distractions to notice what is really valuable and these very simple things are also powerful and that breath practice especially and I know it's important to tell the human story alongside it but I can't possibly underestimate the gift that that has given me in the time that I had it because I have only spoken on the videos that I've been doing online and stuff about sort of where I'm at and I'm still a bit cagey about talking about too much, like, but I will say this, like I have been on my own for nearly two years now. And in that time, there's been no distraction. There's been no material focus. I haven't had anything apart from it's me and the universe, shall we say, right? It's the, my faith and this energy. Because that's all emotion is. It's energy and it's information. And I think sometimes we get caught in the name of it, the name of the emotion and the story of the emotion. Like you always say that really lightly, but it's a bigger thing. So I'm going to give extra details. And <laughs> As a woman, I like a story. Do you know what I mean? All that yeah. drama, right? And we all love that drama. And we, we think an emotion is like something that needs to be felt through. And we know what the emotion is and we attach to it. And sometimes we get addicted to them. But when we realize their energy and they burst in our hearts, there's stuff that we learn then. And that's when the shift happens from being a human to more than human. And I don't think it's a frightening thing to say. I think we have to say that. And I think now is the time to say that. And I think that's something everybody is ready for. There is a more than humanness that comes when we let go the labels of this energy. Because it is sacred. And that's what makes the human sacred. That's what makes the woman sacred, having the knowledge of that as well. And the scent, the sensing quality of it too. Like, I used to check myself and I go, right, so who's my bedfellow tonight? Like, what emotion am I carrying into my bed? And which one am I most familiar with? And I wouldn't label it. I would just feel the feeling and be like, right, out you come. Do you know what I mean? I'd be like, yeah. I'm not hanging out with you anymore. <laughs> and um, it made all the difference. It made all the difference then. It's beautiful, this, because, I mean, I do understand the depth. And I think there's a difference between male and female and, you know, masculine and feminine. And I think people get mixed up with that. 
you know, because I think the way I see things is from a biological perspective, right? Yeah. There's male and female, and that depends basically on whether you're XX or XY. There are some exceptions to that where there's triple X, but to a large degree, that doesn't make much difference. So you're either XX and that's female, or you're XY and that's male. The difficulties come now, and this is played upon now by um, authorities and agencies that are trying to distract us, right? But it's played on a lot because this is about gender, and gender is so powerful because you can be a fully formed, fully toned, 10-pack male, right, with more feminine qualities, right, as a gender sort of specific thing, you know. And I've always described myself, as you know, as gay from the waist up, you know. And most of my life has been determined by my feminine side, not my, you know, my feminine side. And therefore, that used to get me into all sorts of trouble. And when I drank, Shanine, this is what drink did to me and what other substances did to me. It temporarily disinhibited me, right, from the ideas and the social constructs. I didn't know I was going to talk about this. It disinhibited me and it almost reverted me back in a, a very quick way to a balance between masculine and feminine, right? And because I've been more feminine inclined, right, I whizzed right over to the other side, almost like bipolar, you know, and then all these masculine tendencies came out. And that was the power that gripped me because it made me feel strong. It made me, do you see what I mean? And so to go back to what we talked about, repression of one side of our nature and another leads to all sorts of imbalances. And I think because over 32 years ago now, I lost my right to chemical peace of mind. This is my story, and I'm just going to say it, right? So I do not take anything at all now, as far as I know, to adjust my emotional state, because I know that part of my emotional growth and spiritual growth is it must be done naturally, naturally, without any chemical sort of... Uh... Now, I'm not saying that medications aren't important, you know, they are important. I'm not against medicine in any way, shape or form, right? But the individual, me I'm talking about, I've had to intuitively feel my way through this. And I can see that we've been so chemically poisoned in all sorts of ways. that part of my message, if you like, now is that we need to clean our own act up in God knows how many different dimensions. So that's where I'm up to now is to clean our own act up. And then when we feel cleaner and more open and more flowing is to help others to clean their act up so that they can eventually help to clean the planet up as well. Got no idea what I just said there. I'll play it back and listen. But over to you on that one to see if you've got anything to say. I heard you on the like the feminine energy first in your body and the word I heard was alchemical. Yeah. So you're speaking about the internal reality and the biological transformation when you say yeah. that. And you're also talking about the reality that we live in. And in the false reality, we're told that the feminine is something that is locked down and locked in. And there are three main illusions with that. There's the romantic, right? The romantic delusion, the delusion of falling in love, which is not a true thing. And I was addicted to that for a time, right? And there's the delusion of the weaker sex, which is not the truth, right? That feminine energy is sacred. And then also the idea of um, the role of mother as well. That needs to be a balanced commodity. That needs to be one that is both creative and sustainable. And the way that the 2.4 family construct is created and sold to us is in fact a, a form of oppression. Like we speak about patriarchy and it's in fact an alchemical pattern. Like it's something that we are becoming aware of internally before we see it outside. Like everything we need to know is hidden inside of the false reality if we just turn it upside down. Like, and what has what's happened for me over the last number of years is realizing that I had diamonds and I was throwing them at brick walls, both in relationship and in reality, but they bounced back to me. Right? So I could see what was within me that I now need to share outward because that energy is no longer going into a relationship. I don't want to be with anyone right now because of what's happened and because of where I'm at. Like the point is to put that energy and whatever come with it, what have come to learn, put it that way, right? Out and through. 
Um, and I needed to go through that place of the brick walls where it just wasn't moving. It wasn't going anywhere. It wasn't being received in order to study myself, what was coming out of me. And it's that state of like conscious relationship to the self, but also conscious relationship to each other, both male and female, that I feel like I want to be present to now. And perfect design, because if you look back again, if we all look back at our past, it's like everything that we were denied, everything that we were stuck in, everything that we were not provided was in fact what anchored in and activated what was within us yeah. that requires sharing then. And it's not from this like egoic place either as well, I have a divine purpose, right? It's not coming from that place. Like it's just there's the there's the there's the the joyful, playful wish to that's the the wish to share it. It's not like a heavy thing. I should that feel like whatever place we're in right now, in whatever reality we are set, whatever is keeping us stuck is what it's our secret. That's our doorway out. There's something for us to see within ourselves and learn from, not only from the mistakes, but from what is perfected itself, formed a diamond on the inside that we may not be able to see. I agree. And, you know, denial means that we can't see what we need to see. And sometimes denial is smashed by sharing things with other people, honestly. Right. And it's to it's to work with somebody who you can trust, you know, if and you don't trust by somebody saying you can trust me. You trust by yeah. the feeling <laughs> that comes. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. you know, like the priest, though, you can trust me. Tell me everything. <laughs> right? I was such an open book, you know, heart on sleeve and all that sort of business. You know, this is who I am. <laughs> No, no barriers, no, no, but you know, no nothings really. Just this is who I am, and I've been abused and used, and everybody's stolen my ideas and everything. You know, and you know, I've blamed other people, but somebody said to me, Joe, it's because you know, you've got to set boundaries, right? You know, because there's a balance to be struck, you know. And somebody said that the only way to go forward was to be completely open and truthful about everything. That's not yeah, true. Okay. No, 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 I had and to learn that. <laughs> yeah, yeah but we have but you know you're right you know we learn oh, everything oh. and people say to me well what about this i've learned this now if you say to somebody right how do you see it right and they tell you how you see it if you then jump in and say well that's wrong because the way i see it is the way it should be that's what i've had all my life but the way to go forward now is to say how do you see it so you allow a person to express themselves in a group if you like and then you move on to the next person, right? And how do you see it? And what do you feel about this? Without any judgments, without any comments, it's just expressing stuff and getting things onto the table because then the table will have all the solutions to the world's problems. I'm calling that now beyond democracy to soulocracy now. Allow the soul to express itself because that's got the solutions but what I like is, you know, the Desiderata poem, right? For even the dull and ignorant have their story. So everybody's got a chance. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much, you know, because I'll say, have you ever heard the Desiderata? Because even the dull and ignorant have their story. What have you got to say? <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you're speaking of priests there. I remember I was a boy. I was a boy six and I went into a Catholic priest for a confession and because of the autism I gave him like a Spanish inquisition yeah. I went okay so I'm here but I don't understand what a sin is right and he goes what do you mean I was like well if I swear in my head is it the same as swearing outside my head and he went and he paused for a minute and he went oh no <laughs> you can just hear him thinking oh no a precocious one what am I going to do here and uh he said, no, it's not. And I was like, well, I've just sworn five times in my head whilst I'm in here and it feels like a sin. So if it feels like a sin, is it a sin? And he was like, no. And I went, what? And I swore at him. And I go, so that's a sin. And he went, 10 Hail Marys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, it actually happened. And the poor guy, he said he said it was lovely that I was asking that question. Um, But it's sort of, you know, it it's kind of where, it's kind of relating to what we're saying here too. Because like, moment by moment, We'll have an understanding of what's right and what's wrong.
but what's true and right for one in any moment is going to be different for the next one. Exactly. And disrupting that process, free will choice can't be disrupted because inside of that is all the knowledge that another person needs. I have so much faith in like everything that happens around me now, so much faith in everything that happens for other people now too. And that has brought such peace to my heart because I was such a busybody. I wanted to come in and help everybody and fix everything. And I thought everybody needed to, me to be there. And like over the last couple of months, I've just stopped doing that. And, you know, it's it's caused a couple of shockwaves, but it's not a bad thing. And it's not from a place of judgment either. I just feel very deeply that sometimes we have to renovate a bit and take stock of where maybe given is too much. What about forgiveness then? What about the feeling or the idea that your greatest enemy is your greatest gift? Oh, man. Hmm. What? Just thought I'd pop that one out there, Shanine, and see what the response was. I've been through that. It has been it has been a wild thing to experience. There comes a point where I'm trying not to dither over my words. I don't want to go over this too much. Like I had I had the inside of myself shattered to absolute pieces recently, which you're aware of. And um, even now, like there's a there's a smaller part of me that still aches from that experience. And you know, no doubt there were thousand other heartbreaks before that, but this one, something happens after that where you see everything as a creation, right? Something that is part of a divine design yeah. and it becomes beautiful then yeah. like even the darkest most maleficent things even experiencing that they are so beautiful and you know the reality is that's the point that's the point where we're here we're supposed to witness everything and see everything and take it all into our hearts in the way that it is formed and and it's not it's not even light or dark either you know it's like one soul up against another it's one creation form to create a certain alchemical happening like it's just energy moving and flowing but it's so so there's so much art to it you know and i used to say that all the time joe i used to love i love to observe the darkness and i love to like just hold it with my whole heart like we speak about forgiveness, but what's there to forgive when everything is designed to take us to the right place anyway? All of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, of and there's nothing to be afraid of either. That's that's the bit I love right now. I don't have any fear of anything anymore. Anymore. Like because of like, I think it's the autism and obviously whatever's happened. I have to constantly mind the ocean that moves in me. Like I feel like I do this a lot, right? Yeah. But it's not yeah. coming from... It's not coming from an emotional place. It's like it's an energy thing. And I keep telling people that now. And I used to associate that with the autism autism since I understood it. I was like, I have an ocean in me and sometimes it's swinging and sometimes it's still. Um, it's beyond emotion now. Like it's not that at all. But there's no fear in it. It's just either breathing down in or coming slightly out. And I don't know, I don't know how the world experiences things because I haven't really been in the world for a very long time. Like, mm -hmm. I, this is like the first time I've popped out and shown my head. And to be honest, I was like, this will be fun. Like, yeah. <laughs> because it's been a while. But um, I don't feel a separation between one thing or another. I don't feel a separation between myself or anybody else. Like, and I don't feel like anything that's happened before, now will happen later really matters. It is just the game. And we are all guiding each other home one way or another, no matter how painful or how different or how complex the artwork that we have to confront inside of that. Lovely. I, um, I've had my heart broken that many times, right, because I had to keep repeating the same lesson. You know, I, I remember going to see Romeo and Juliet. And the, the point I'm going to make here is it's not the same 
but it's similar. And I think our souls set up a similar pattern to reconnect with the past experiences. So if you want to bring karma into this, you can, but we need to, you know, so, so the important thing is, right, it's like Groundhog Day where things repeat themselves because we haven't hooked in properly in order to sort of exorcise that painful part, you know. So it's almost like fishing. This is how I see it in my mind. It's like fishing and boom, it's in. The pain comes back. It reminds us or we recognize all the whole system, you know. Sometimes we can even see what went on then. This is the way I'm looking at it. And I know there's no past and future and blah, 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 all that sort of stuff, but that's what it feels like, you know. And so, you know, I, I'm such, and I've still got this, and something that you said before as well, I realize there's a complete difference between sentimentality yeah. and real emotions, authentic emotions, right? And I think that the human is full of authentic emotions that are trying to express themselves because that's the soul bit, but it's almost like capped by sentimentality. It's almost like misdirected by the head in order to not go through the fact finding and fact facing process, you know, and I like another expression is, are we preaching caution while practicing evasion? Shanine, I've done that all my life. Oh, I best not just do that yet. Let's see how it all pans out and nothing ever changes because we're on that same loop that you were talking about. So when we come out of revolution, which is like a loop and we start to evolve, it hurts like fuck. <laughs> only, only because the soul attracts to it what it needs to let go of and learn next i can see I just, that I, i've got a wee piece of it left right and it's like a wee star in my stomach and i just want to hold on to it for a wee while longer because for the last two months i was on the soul train too hard and i want a wee break right and i've learned i can do that now where i can say right i'm taking my time and there's a wee tiny piece of this left and i will remove it at will when necessary like just right now and that was so important as well to learn like i have agency over the process yeah. of things like i used to get sand right and i'd be moving through stuff and not understand it and equally couldn't then absorb what was coming in alongside it now i have agency over that experience i'll be ready for my next like probably tomorrow night or something do you know what i mean of course, of course. <laughs> but it's just Sometimes you need a wee break. Sometimes you just want to watch Netflix and vape on the sofa and, and do those sorts of things for a while, you know? But when there's no standard to compare to, well, you're beyond memory and beyond standards. You can do what the fuck you please, can't you? Yeah. Because that's the way it feels, you know? And you can have... I've just watched 21 episodes of Travellers. I don't do that, right, on Netflix. I've just watched them one after the other because something was set... And I was... Because there was part of me that was trying to jump in, ooh, no, no, you don't want to do that, you know, and all that. And I was eating all sorts of shite, like loads of crisps, loads of chips and everything. And I was thinking, fucking hell, I'm enjoying this, you know. But, <laughs> but the Travellers thing, I mean, I got this. Sit down there now for the next three days and watch Travellers because there's information in there that you need to see. So I go with it now, you know. I just wanted to do something as well because I understand this, right, Yes. My sort of information emerges upwards now. That's where I get me information. I was always looking outwards for information to yes. come from the heavens. That's my imagination out there. That's something that's like audio visual. And my imagination and fantasizing kicks in from my head. I realize today when that's in, because I can feel it, because it starts to close things down. And I realize that the answer comes, it's like a vision rather than imagination. So it's something that not, I'm not making up with my thought. It's yeah. something that emerges intuitively. And I get that one breath at a time and one picture at a time. And I've also learned that intuition only works in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. So planning is pointless, right? We've got to have, as a human, we've got to have some sort of plan only to realize we might have to let go of the whole lot, right? Instantaneously, you know. I love the word extemporaneousness because it means to live without a script, to sort of almost like go in, sticking your chin out and think and saying to the universe, go on then, what's on the cards next? What is on the cards next? Like I've I've stopped asking that question.
like I've stopped asking that question. It's more fun, yeah. you know, to be sort of open to what is felt and seen. I know when I'm fighting something, I know though, because I'll start asking. Yeah. Right. And you only yeah, ever yeah. do that when you're like, I know the answer to this, but I just want an alternative point of view for a wee minute to make me feel better. I need it validated from outside of me. Yeah. And I don't do that so much anymore. There's like, no, there's a party here. It's not just one. Do you know what I mean? Like, I have the, a knowledge of that helps you know there's there's not so much just one essence one energy we are receiving from all sides and anyone who's walked on their own like will know that like and it becomes really obvious so yeah they, i get what you mean about it coming up from in here but sometimes it's nice to ask as well too you know i'm no, not I always able to do that I totally understand what you're saying. I feel it. I can. I understand the thinking. Same sort of thinking. See, doing the cards now and all that sort of business and going to psychic yeah. mediums and stuff like that, that hasn't yeah. appealed to me for a long time because if yeah. this power, right, that's if this force, this 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 help that's looking after me, if it yeah. can't work out what I need to do next and just guide me, because it's not outside of me, it's me, it's me deeper, supervise yourself, you know what I mean? If I can't say to that, right, give us a clue, will you? And ask that first and foremost, right? So I don't need anybody telling me from the outside how I should be and what's going to happen because mm -hmm. I've relied on that all my life is information from so-called external sources. I don't anymore. And people say to me, you want to read this book? You want to look at this, that, and the other? No, I fucking don't, right? No. I'll, I'll take the information in, right? Because I don't disclude yeah. or discard anything. I'll take all the information. I'll stick it in my heart of hearts, and I'll say, I'm not quite sure what to do here. Give us a clue. And that's become so, so simple. Let me just do this next bit, right? Yeah. Sometimes when I read now, I don't read for information now. I read for confirmation. So if some sort of idea comes to me, emerges to say, yeah. go and have a look at that book over there, I can sometimes yeah. just open a page and a line will jump out, right? Yeah. And it'll say, see, Joe, the information you're getting from us, we're just confirming it with you so you're on the right yeah, path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so synchronicities and all that Jungian stuff, right, is, mm. is completely like where I'm at, really. You know what I mean? Yeah. I take the weather, though. I need to take the weather from myself. Like I'm on TikTok a lot now and I watch people doing the readings and I started to get the cards out because it was like a nice, wee, comfortable space I was in. I'm used to using them and it's something I do. But then I realized I don't need them. And I'll be in a space where I can take the weather, right? Just momentarily. And it'll be very conversational. It's not like all singing, all dancing. And, and I share that. And I feel like I should share that because it's coming out anyway. And also, see, like, this is a weird link, and I don't know what it means. And I'm sure I'll be shown, but I'm never more open and balanced and clear as when I'm receiving like that. Because I think all senses are open, and I feel alive, and I don't feel contracted inside of myself. And it's it's the most free experience um, receiving to me. It's part of my nature and um, I would be hard pressed to stop doing that. Like it's never, I'd never been comfortable with like, and I know I can pull stuff down um, with like card readings and stuff. I can do that. And it's, it's fun from time to time, but it's not that that happens. It's something else. And I feel like, I don't know what it's forming into, but I'll, I'm, I'm paying attention. And when I get the notion to do it, I will. And, you know, I'm, I'm realising this as well, too. You know, there's not a lot of fanfare and anything valuable lately. Like, you know, and and we have to watch the old spiritual ego. I'm trying really hard not to fall back into that as well. Like, because it's, it's something that I don't even have to try, really. Like, I'm, I'm past that point. But it is it is something that's there. Taking the weather, I think, is is, is a positive thing. It's an, another way to express love. Right. And every wee nugget that we get, and it's just wee nuggets, you know, it's, it's so valuable to a way and it widens the net. And it's a beautiful thing to do. I love watching people, you know, see TikTok's lovely. 
it's just a load of wee, wee people doing funny, beautiful things. Like, I just, I could sit for hours just watching people being gorgeous. Like, I get so much pleasure from that, all that freedom and playfulness and messing around and just, you know, connecting. Like, because I was doing videos for years on here and it just got, it got a bit of dry because it was just wee sentences you get underneath. You don't actually see folk. And like, and on that app, it's like a revolution. And I, I haven't been on it before until about two months ago because I got told. And maybe they, like the ADHD as well, I was like, I'm not doing that. So I didn't for ages, I'm not, not doing that because I'll end up stuck on it. It's just corporation and advertisement and blah, 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 blah. And it's not at all. <laughs> it's the loveliest place. I agree entirely. I love it. There's one fella I love watching. He, honest to God, I haven't got fed up with him yet. I've been watching him for ages called Anatoly, his name is. He's like a bodybuilder fella, right? Yeah. But he takes the piss all the time and he goes into these gyms. Like who? He's... <laughs> <What? Like> who? <laughs> yeah. he, no, no, he goes into these gyms with these big, massive fellas who are bit pulling these weights up, you know what I mean? And he's pretending yeah. to be a cleaner and he goes, excuse me, excuse me. And he said, he said, can I just clean here? And what he does is, right, they've got all these weights on. He picks them up with one hand and moves them over. And well, I just burst out laughing all the time, you know what I mean? And then everybody says to me, all this, you know, all this AI, it's the devil's work and all that. Oh, fuck off, right. I'll, de I'll decide for myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll decide for myself. And the whole point is, I do listen to what they're saying and I go, Okay, um, fair enough. Like, and I'll stick it in my heart, and I get this. This thing comes up in like a big spiritual voice. Bollocks! <laughs> <laughs> no, and I that's can't. what my life is. That it's just oh, what a load of old bollocks! Just like there's this fella. There's this fella from Wales, right? And he takes you on a wee walk, and he takes snippets of every three seconds of him on a walk, and he's chatting away the whole time in this heavy Welsh accent. And earlier on, he was like. He was giving people advice on what to do if they ever got probed in the anus by an alien. <laughs> and I want to do that stuff. Like, that's what I want to do on there. You know, like, I just want to go on and do funny things, you know, but with, like, you know, a loving slant. Ah, yeah. oh, it's so backwards, the word, right? See, see where the job I have I'm around children all the time, teenagers especially. And... The most important part of that job is the conversations I have with them in between, right? Those engagements and connections. It is so silly and backwards what we believe sharing and creating is supposed to be. It's not sharing knowledge, right? It's not demonstrating what we can become. It's not that. It's, it's just putting your heart in for a minute and making somebody laugh or creating something fun, or just reminding people they're not on their own while all this mad energetic stuff is going on. Like, that's all it is. There's nothing else to do. And it drives me mental when I see all the effort people put in to being pious and serious and having no sense of humor. Because that's not what we, that's not what we came in with. Like, see my wee boy, he came in a fully formed human. He is the most obstinate, right? dictatorial self-aware and hilarious wee boy he is so strong-willed and he knows who he is his personality is perfectly intact and he will forever call me out on anything i do that he doesn't agree with mommy i saw what you did don't do that again don't do that again he is so strong and i i think i think the word sometimes makes us feel like we're not and like all the things that he knows and he does, that's that's what we're here to be doing. Absolutely. I learned from him, not Absolutely. the other way around at all. Like it's laughable, Joe. He's a nightmare, right? He's the most perfect nightmare that I was ever formed and the most important thing that ever happened to me. But he's a nightmare. <laughs> so I'd like a us demon, to remember that. A demon child, thank God for that. I know. Because I mean, I when he was born, I mean, I was... So overwhelmed with it all, really. And there's the fleur de lis again, right? So I don't know what that means. There's some, there's some, there's some trickler type of thing going on there. But uh, yeah. I call him Finn, as you know, you know, for Dolph, I call Dolphin. him because Dolphin, you know. But um, that's what I believe, you know. And I, I listen to people, and they're saying that these children are coming there in now, clean, you know, without all that sort of baggage from ancestral past as well. And I have to feel my way into that, but it does seem to be happening. 
you know, and I seem to be involved now with the um, our children are not our children. They come through us, not from us, you know. Yeah. So we're the sort of delivery sort of mechanisms where they're mm -hmm. coming out. And I honestly feel that by watching these kids, like the old Tibetans used to do, feel yeah. their way into what's naturally emerging from them and who they essentially mm -hmm. are, and then help them in that. So we can't to facilitate an environment where they grow themselves. And yeah. they, you know, I believe that wholeheartedly, you know, and I also put a thing up the other day, there are no special children, right? There are no special children. They're all special, if you want to use that word, but there are certainly specialized souls. And yeah. that's really important to me because yeah. each soul now that's coming through, right, mm -hmm. has got a particular set of frequencies representative mm -hmm. of certain skills and information that we need to listen to and take the action from you know I, I don't who, know who this... wants to be who wants to be special anymore anyway it's far too much bloody work absolutely well, well, fast, so trying we to should be know special because i've been there i've been there i've done that that's too many costumes right that's too much effort i want a wee job i want a wee job a nice wee job that's light-hearted and fun inside of whatever the hell is going on around here i do not want a big hat or a big podium thank you very much i have other things to be doing like, and I think it's important as well to you to say that, like, that's just a, an effort we don't need. And it's not, it's not to sniff at where we've been, but I'm over it now. Me too. I mean, me too. I mean, I used to think that that was what we had to go for because that was the program that was running in me, you know, and yeah. I got all that stuff, you know, I've spoken across the world. I've done all this. I've, I can say big scientific words, you know, and, you <laughs> yeah. know where I'm up to now is in my professional job, right? You know, this psycho neuro endocrino immuno hematology, you know, that's what I, that's what I do for a living. Right. I'm actually a you lecturer. Love them, no joke. I, know, you I, fucking, I love it because I love it because it makes me laugh my head off on the inside, you know, and what, what makes me look, I look at them and they go, oh, God, I can't approach him because he's just said the word that's got more than three letters in it, you know what I mean, and stuff like that. But I am a lecturer, right, in postgraduate medical education, right, and that's what I do for a living, right, and the, the beautiful thing about it now is that all the stuff that I love, all the psychology of it in, in and now, I'm telling them about beyond learning now, beyond psychology, and I'm also talking about how our programs are right fed into us even before we're born. And honest to God, they're transfixed by what I'm saying or what's coming at me, God. And I know that I'm in exactly the right place. And as I've said to you before, I'm like Oscar Schindler in the enemy's camp, right? Having the time of my life. And you know that my main function is to take the piss out of people, right? Take the piss out of knowledgeable people, right? And I love it. I absolutely love it. Right. Your dab hand. Well, no, I'm getting and your better. Your timing is always impeccable, Joe. <laughs> I could, you know, as much as I try to have a big head, as much as I try, if I get so much of a sniff of an ego or a big head or think myself a little bit stash around you, you will pop that balloon pretty quick, won't you? But won't you? I've been told that I am supposed to be an ego slayer, right? Or a dragon. <laughs> right, right, right. But, but. <laughs> I think what I've learned also is we can't destroy the ego because the ego is so it's so important. No, it's no, the no. bonds. It's the conditioned and programmed bonds mm -hmm. that have like um, over egged the ego. Really, that's what we need to see and just sort of reset them. Really. This is good. This let me ask you a couple of questions. Right. Not hard ones, but if They'll anybody's be... go on. Well, no, go on. Well, are there always hard questions, Joe? Not. So people, my, my thing is to um, sort of simplify the complexity of living, really. And it's to do this easily. And we know that breathing is important. But any other little practical tips that might help people, right, who are struggling and trying to understand what this is all about? Because in our previous conversations that we've had recently, there are people out there who may be going through this awakening process, let's just call it that, right? Who may be, who may be their heads are battered and they don't know what's going on. How, what would you suggest that they should do possibly if they feel like it? When nothing is being given, 
find a way to give when there is no one around place yourself where they are and when you are in a state of pain observe what's truly powerful in the world and it's everything invisible when we are in that state everything that is pure and real and true becomes magnified and it's kindness and generosity and compassion that the the energy behind that becomes so much brighter and more obvious whatever place we're in it is a great gift to recognize that those small increments those tiny actions of like such impact such impact and by giving it out there is this sudden awareness that it comes back to you straight away there's this spiral that gets shown right you start to remember how powerful you are and that where the mind tells us we are nothing it's a lie when the mind tells us we have nothing it's a lie because our hearts are so alive and every time we give a little bit of it out right it magnifies and grows things accelerate from that energy more than anything else and there is nothing i have been more grateful for out of everything that has gone on the last couple of years which you are aware of joe is that i have never been richer i have never felt more grateful for everything i've never felt more clear i've never felt more sure of myself obviously not in a cocky way because you would never allow for that but i've never been able to say i know who i am now and that moment where we hit that bottom and there is nothing and no one or at least that's what the mind is saying that's the next thing you learn that's the next thing you learn and it only takes a wee step outside of that experience to receive that. I I feel that nothing happens, nothing happens by accident. Nope. Nothing. Not a thing. Even no, even the most the smallest details are there as mm -hmm. a guide, really. As a mm -hmm. guide. You know, and um it's almost like the hero and the heroine's journey, they're archetypical. You know, and I think that there's 12 sort of main stories. Yeah. But when they become stereotypes, that's the obstruction to it. When an archetype becomes a stereotype, right, we're missing the point, really. And I think, as you said before, personality, right, there's a difference between personality and character. I think that character is of the soul, but personality yeah. is of the ego, really. And if you consider what persona means, it means a mask. And I think what's happening now is as this great big wave of consciousness is coming in, yeah. it's stripping people of all masks. Oh God, right? yeah. But those yeah. that are having the real those that are having the real problems are those that are trying to keep the mask on, right? Yeah. And ducking the I, I and understand. I understand that though. That's a painful place to be. Of you know, that's a, it's a really hard, hard thing when that comes off. Like that's a that's a hard moment. Like God, I'm getting teary even thinking about it. Cause those masks went on from pain. Like those masks went on from protection. Like that's I have I have I don't even know what to say. Like I just think that needed to be said. Like I, mean, well, I agree, nothing... and I think I think the yeah. beauty that we find, Shanine, is in the belly of the beast. And I think that we all have to do that. We have to face that beast and realise that's where all the gemstones are, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. they are, like we've said. And I think, you know, we've been through this, right? And it's not to say... But I'm not, not done yet either. Like, no, no, no because, say, because I... the progress of the soul, that deep thing, that existential part of us, that it was never born and never dies, blah, 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 blah. That goes on forever, right? But yeah. what I'm trying to say is the, the thing that's most important to me is if yeah. I'm feeling emotionally disturbed, yeah. there's some realignment that needs to take place deep within me. And that is so hard, that, right? Because when you're in pain, or when I was in pain, the yeah. finger would come to say, 
if you change, you'll make, if you do what I tell you to do, I will feel better about it. And that's where that subtle control or sometimes not so subtle control comes in because yeah. I'm feeling emotionally disturbed and I yeah. don't want to look at myself. But fortunately, there's three fingers coming back there to say, I, self, me. What is it in that I need to learn about me that I yeah. need to let go of? And just to go back to what you started with, right? Yeah. It's when we see that then things drop off us. All the weights that we've been carrying, right, start to drop off us and we become lighter in ourselves. And I honestly believe that that's what enlightenment is. You start to feel lighter in yourself, right? And you start yeah. to lighten up a bit as well. I don't mind getting insulted anymore. There was a point on this journey where I really didn't like people to insult me. I did not like being insulted because I was very proud of this false space that I had created. I thought it was beautiful, right? I was like, excuse me, I don't, don't you dare, right? I'll get really, really hurt. And I've realized now, I actually lean into those moments where I'm going to get insulted. And I said that to you because it doesn't hurt me anymore because that's not, that's not what I am. Like the only thing that can ever be insulted is like whatever has been perceived, and that thing that's perceived is often, you know, by all accounts, not actually real and not anything if, to do with you. Like, and I can take responsibility for that now. Like, that's another thing I want to say before we sign off. I am responsible for my emotions and the truth, whatever shape it comes in, is loving. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Yep. And that's a, that's a deep, strong lesson. And for anybody who feels yep. particularly sensitive and is triggered to hell, Please see that as a positive thing. If yeah. just you can step back. We're not trying to teach lessons here. I'm only sharing what, what yeah. I've gone through and my experience. Mr. I'm always learning, right? Sometimes yeah. I make really big cock-ups, but you know what? I just brush them off now to say, all right, miss that one completely, right? Try and remember it next time. And sometimes it comes around again and I have to repeat it because mm -hmm. nobody's perfect, but everybody's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Shani and Anne, I love the bones of you, as you well know, right? And lovely. it's so, so lovely to have this chat. It and always, uh, always a pleasure. I hope people, you know, maybe get something from this. And if they don't, they don't, so be it, you know. But let's maybe think about doing one of these further down the line to see how we're both progressing. How does that sound? I'd love to, anytime. I'm open now. Yeah. I've, I've broken the seal, as they say. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So thanks very much, my love. And um, always there for you, as you know. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Thanks, and, uh, No, You're welcome. Bye, and, uh, everybody. See you Big later. hugs to that little demon child. Right. <laughs> I'll give him a hug from you. And on that note. Ta-ra. All right. Bye-bye. Ta-ra.